Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. And Art and I have been discussing one of the biggest holidays of the year, Christmas. Right, as, Christmas traditions. Right, yeah, as you can see behind me, uh, uh, I, was, I think I was uh, noodling out the tune. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. And, oh, we, and, and I'm like, with the, with the, with the surfing background, absolutely. I was thinking of Hale Kalikamaka is a whatever. I can't remember that. <laughs> okay. Surfing and, and wait, hop. is somebody, is somebody eavesdropping on our conversation here? Well, you know, it is. It's the man who's going to fill us in on some of the great Christmas movies. It's Manny Pacheco. Hey, Manny. <laughs> How you doing, guys? Yeah, Manny, good to see you. Looks like good Christmas. To see you. Looks like Christmas there. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> now I'm ready. Okay. Right. So uh, I, I see that uh, uh, you uh, decorated the uh, Manny Pacheco tree. Uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, tell us uh, uh, Christmas stories. Uh, we know a lot about the new ones, Home Alone, and all the rest of those. But uh, what were some of the original? Really, original well, Christmas stories. Let me just start by saying that Hallmark has just really cornered the market on the modern Christmas movies. I mean, I, I mean, there are so many Hallmark Christmases. I'm waiting for their latest one, which is going to be a big one. It's going to be uh, Christmas at the Space Station. That should be a big one. But I, I you know, I don't. I, <laughs> I just don't understand why they, they've cornered it. But just like in Los Angeles, for those folks who live here, uh, where, where Coast, Coast uh, plays Christmas music from the end of, uh, the end of uh, Halloween until the you know, New Year's Day, uh, Hallmark has really captured that market. Yeah. I prefer to watch a lot of those classic Christmas movies from the, from the 30s, 40s, and into the 50s. And how, how can you not begin with the original um, 1930s production of A Christmas Carol. Oh, uh, of course. A wonderful, wonderful film. Yeah. And, and, of course, it tells a, a, a traditional story about Christmas, complete with Scrooge yep. and Tiny Tim and Bob Cratchit and the like. Uh, that's, that's, that's my starting point. Is to, to, and, of course, there was a 1950s uh, production as well, Alistair Sim, Sims playing the uh, the original Scrooge at that point. I like that one a lot. Yep. And and there was a more even a more recent one with George um, C. Scott. Pat, George C. Scott, thank you, uh, which I didn't care for. Uh, right. It was well done, but I just didn't care for it. I li I like the Alistair Sims uh, version. But but well, but really, I like but, the Owen myself, but, but that's okay. But really, the classic that that I grew up with that was only shown on Christmas was, uh, and you may uh, disagree with this, but A Wonderful Life. Yes. Well, that's 1940s, and that is that, that traditionally has been a movie that plays all year round, but now they, they've kind of uh, set it aside and, and only play it during Christmas time, which I think is a shame, because the movie as it stands it, is, is spectacular. And, um, it, and it is a go-to movie, uh, as is... Um, um, the the great movie with with Danny Kaye and Bing Crosby, White Christmas, that becomes a go to movie during the holidays. You bet. Um, I prefer those movies because of the wonderful character actors that are also in in those movies. Uh, Henry Travers as Clarence the Angel, just about steals the film. He's so good. Of course, Lionel Barrymore as Mr. Potter. It's a Wonderful Life is filled with great character characterizations. Uh, Gloria Graham as Violet Bick. Uh, but also in, in um, The White Christmas, General Waverly, portrayed by Dean Jagger, I think is so remarkably good. Um, he embodies the whole war effort and then, of course, the retired soldier. Great, great film. But there are others that are less, uh, less well known, and I think we should, we should discuss them. Well, uh, I've, I've, I've got one, and okay. it's close to Art's a little bosom, because Art, you produced... A, um, a special event mm -hmm. on the reunion of the cast of A, of a, a Christmas Story. Yeah, did that on its 20th you, anniversary. You brought them all back together. It was a great, really great event. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't go. I only seen the poster in your office. But uh, A Christmas Story, you know, now that's a, a modern classic in my mind. 
Yeah. And oh, it and is absolutely a modern class. Right. And, it plays every year. And uh, uh, the really, uh, there are a lot of wonderful things about it. But we had all of the child, the principal child stars, including uh, Schwartz and uh, uh, Patella, who's now a puppeteer up in uh, uh, San Francisco, uh, who brought his fiance at the time, really wonderful gal. Uh, but we, it was the last uh, public appearance of Darren McGavin, who had uh, uh, had a stroke and uh, came down. And that has become, uh, not to divert too, too much from classic films, it became a classic film because uh, it was shelved and almost never shown uh, because Bob Clark, the director, insisted on doing something inspired by Gene Shepard's story that he had heard. Uh, and he said, you want me to do Porky's too? Give me the money for this film. And uh, that... they said, no, no, no. And then finally they said, well, we need Porky's too. They gave him the money. They showed it on Thanksgiving for like two showings and put it on the shelf until they finally made it back uh, to become a classic, uh, maybe uh, 10 or 15 years later on about TBS or one of those stations. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing because uh, how could they be so short sighted as to put it on the shelf? Well, because uh, it's, it's Hollywood, television it's Hollywood, classic. It's now. Hollywood. It's Hollywood. That's, 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 the, correct that's answer. Had the correct answer. It, yeah. well, most people, when they think of, of, of Christmas, they think of Bing Crosby. He had three big hits. Oh. Uh, yeah. In, in terms of music, he appeared, of course, in White Christmas, and he also appeared in Holiday Inn. You think of Bing Crosby, but I contend that there are three actors who appeared in uh, some great movies that you would, you may or may not have heard of, but they're also associated and tied very closely to Christmas. Number one, Barbara Stanwyck. Now, you what? don't think of Barbara Stanwyck as a Christmas icon, but she appeared in two of the most wonderful Christmas stories, the first of which was called Christmas in Connecticut with uh, Dennis Morgan and S.Z. Sakal and uh, Sidney Greenstreet. It's a delightful movie that takes place uh, on Christmas. And uh, it's, it's a fun little romp. It's a, it's a light comedy. Uh, I like it. But a more serious movie she did um, was called Remember the Night. And uh, it, it was one of uh, the four films she made with Fred McMurray. Everybody remembers Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray with Double Indemnity. Yeah. But this Remember the Night is a wonderful old Christmas story about a, a young lady who is struggling with finances, uh, in, involves herself with some petty larceny, gets arrested, and becomes, uh, put, is put in the custody of the uh, police officer, uh, uh, Fred McMurray. They can't get her to jail because he's on his way to visit his mom for the holidays. So yes. he takes her along and they fall in love. And of course, the movie, I'm not going to give away the ending, but the movie does end uh, fairly, fairly uh, sensibly and happily. Uh, the mother is played by the remarkable Beulah Bondi. It's a fabulous film. And of course, Barbara Stanwyck carries a Christmas tradition because of that. Yeah, that I had forgotten about that film. Great. Yeah. And then of course that the that's other, a great film. The other actor that has to fall in line with, with Christmas is uh the father of June Lockhart. Gene Lockhart appeared in a number of great Christmas related films. Of course, he was Bob Cratchit in, in the original uh, a Christmas uh, a, uh, a, 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 a <laughs> Christmas Carol. And uh, it, people complained that he looked a little too rotund to be the uh, gaunt Bob Cratchit. But he, but, but the thing about this movie that's real special is the person who plays his wife is his real wife. And his children, those are all his real children, including June Lockhart. So she makes an appearance. He's also the judge on Miracle in 34th Street. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah which is another great Christmas classic, of course, with... Uh, Chris Kringle making an appearance and uh, Edmund Gwynn winning an Academy Award for playing Santa Claus. Yeah. Uh, John Payne, a very young Natalie Wood, Maureen O'Hara. And there he is, uh, Gene Lockhart, in, as the role of the judge determining whether or not Santa Claus is sane. <laughs> and if you look at the... Um, the, the uh, sequel to uh, the very popular Going My Way, the Bells of St. Mary's, uh, Bing Crosby and uh, Ingrid Bergman. It's a Christmas classic. 
Uh, and Gene Lockhart, again, he appears in this movie as well. Now, Why the Bells of St. Mary also is, it should always be considered a Christmas classic. In the very last scene of It's the Wonderful Life, when Jimmy Stewart realizes that he doesn't want to die, he doesn't want to commit suicide, he's running through the town saying, hello, Bailey, building and loan. Hello, movie theater. And when he points to the movie theater, guess what they're showing? The Bells of St. Mary. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Now, the third film, the third film is called, uh, uh, the, the third actor, I should say, the third actor is Monty Woolley. If you've never heard of Monty Woolley, you should have, because Monty Woolley is a, an absolute joy of an actor who appears in a number of films you wouldn't think of when it comes to Christmas. The Man Who Came to Dinner with Betty Davis, Monty Woolley plays an actual um, a, a critic, a theater critic, really irascible, hard to get along with, stuck during Christmas at a person's home, basically taking over the home. And he's, it's a really, really funny romp. It was even a better stage play. And, and, and the person who played it on stage, Monty Woolley. And then I would be remiss if I didn't bring up Monty Woolley's performance in a remarkable film that should always be considered a Christmas classic, and that is The Bishop's Wife, with mm -hmm. David uh, Niven and Cary Grant and Loretta Young. Um, it's, it's just a, a, a really tender, sweet uh, portrait of how an angel changes the trajectory of a, of a town searching for the Christmas spirit. And if you if you get a chance, you, you don't want to miss The Bishop's Wife. It's just a really, really great movie. And Monty Woolley plays a professor who is an atheist who finds religion uh, during this Christ that, that particular Christmas season. Never realized there was such a rich tradition of Christmas movies. What what do you think is the oldest Christmas movie? Wow. Well, I mean, uh I, I, I would guess it would have to be uh, A Christmas Carol. However, I'm sure there might have been a couple of Christmas uh, references in, in silent films. I can't think of one. Oh, well, uh, Laurel and Hardy doing big business in the 1920s classic, a 1927-28 classic, where in the middle of July, they happen to be Christmas tree salesmen. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's not going to go well. <laughs> Oh, one more thing. If you want to look for a television classic, you can't go wrong with my friend. <laughs> of course. Hey, hi, the Grinch. Mr. Mr. Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, Boris Karloff's uh, classic. And, and, and it was made into a movie as well. Jim Carrey playing the Grinch. Uh, Ron Howard directing. But I can't forget my old pal, the Grinch. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. <laughs> yes, my friend, the Grinch. So. Very good. Well, uh, one Very of one good. of the favorites, uh, uh, which uh, you didn't mention, uh, uh, but I guess it's not forgotten Hollywood. It's more modern. Is uh, the Yule Log? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Sit around and watch the Yule Log. Right. That's always fun. I, I think it's very, very steady, uh, dependable performances. Uh, and uh, we used to watch it in New York uh, to see if we could find out where it started to repeat. Uh, oh, my you know, gosh. So, uh, in other words, the, the logs would burn down, and then all of a sudden uh, it would repeat at some point. Now I think they've done a better job of it. But the U log, uh, I think, is up there. Never won an Academy Award. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. So, the Yule Log, so, that's my, that's my, that's my go-to. Remind me not to, uh, accept an invitation to your house if that's going to be the entertainment du jour. <laughs> okay, well, we will we'll set you back from the TV. Uh, but, uh, you and Mr. Grinch over there, uh, where, where can we find out more about uh, what you guys, uh, think about and write about? What do you think? What do you think? Where do you think they can find us? He says uh, ForgottenHollywood.com if you'd like to read my blogs. And, of course, the Forgotten Hollywood book series can be found on Amazon. Right? That's right. <laughs> you know, I guess, I guess ventriloquist is not among your, uh, uh, your best traits. But, but I, can, no. I can hardly see his lips moving. So um, say something else, uh, Matinee. Say something else. What, what do you want me to say? 
that's really good. His lips are not moving, yet the the, the sounds coming out of your voice really remarkable. <laughs> Well, I will say this. I want to wish all of the viewers of Celebrating Act Two the happiest of holidays, a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. Uh, I hope I hope 2021 is going to be more prosperous for you uh, and more exciting than being stuck at home. And uh, I, I hope everybody stays safe and health, healthy during this holiday season. And, How's that? And perfect. And from John and myself at Celebrating Act Two, a Merry Christmas to all. And uh, uh, enjoy to all a good night. And, and to all a good night. <laughs> John, have the last word. Bah humbug. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.